Hey everybody, this is Stephanie here with Infernal TV, and I'm here with Midnight. So how are you? Doing fantastic. I'm. Uh, I woke up and I'm breathing air, so uh, doing pretty good. Hey, you know that's better than what a lot of dead people can say, right? <laughs> no, I know. I don't like <laughs> they don't have to work. They just like lay around all day. I know, right? Sleep when you're dead, right? Yeah. <laughs> that's the good they, life. <laughs> They, they serve all the animals, you know, uh, of, of, of feeding them their flesh, so. See, see, it is it is good when we die. We give back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's better to give than to receive. <laughs> all right. Uh, well, let's go in and talk about Let There Be Witchery. Um, I definitely think this album is more belligerent than um, Rebirth by Blasphemy. <laughs> well, hey, that's when I was listening to it last night. I was like, this is insanity. This is belligerent. And I was like, I'm going to write that in my interview notes. <laughs> Yeah, that's a pretty good description, actually. <laughs> well, my next part of the question was, do you agree? So I guess you do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I definitely agree. I mean, uh, that, that was, uh, that was, that's the point. That's an extension. Um. Now, one of my favorite songs on the album is More Torment, and I just think it's because I feel like not only does the song sound different, uh, like it stands out on the album, but also, is a, like, I've never really heard you write a song like that before, so um, how did the writing of that song come about? Um, you know, I mean, all these, all these tunes, I, you know, I don't know really how they come about, uh, it, it, it more of just um, letting them letting them flop around to me. You know, <laughs> I'm I'm not a I'm not intelligent enough to know about how these things happen. You know, fire and all that kind of stuff. You know, man made things, creations and whatnot. I'm just a poor caveman. Um, but uh, you know, it's a uh, well, pretty much. I mean, well, musically, it's to me at least, it's it's just a. Uh, Got the uh, Celtic Frost Hellhammer type, uh, you know. Again, the, just the, the primitive uh, drum beat. Um, so, yeah, I don't really, I can't really describe how they can't. I, maybe, maybe I can describe the in my in my memoirs at some point uh, the lyrics, but yeah, that's. Uh, no, I don't know. I don't have a really good answer for that. That's a, that's too good of a question. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, now I will be asking a question more about the lyrics in a uh, in a different question, but I do want to focus on more of like that hooky catchiness that you write in your songs. But also, like you know, your songs are very dirty sounding. So where do you find the balance between the two? Well, yeah, that's it. That's exactly it. You know, that's that's the kind of stuff I like. I I like songs. I like hooks. I like, believe it or not, I, I like pop music. I like to sing songs. And, and <laughs> it's bad as that, it's that sounds. And, and when I'm talking about pop songs, I'm not talking about like Britney Spears. I'm talking about like, you know, to me, pop songs. You know, 60s, 70s, 80s songs. You know, but um, and and, and but just. But grotesqueness, you know, the, the aggression of, of still just being a, a twelve year old kid. So it, it is. It's just just to try to find that that balance of of always keeping my thirteen, twelve year old brain of 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 um, being a, um, a, a, a kid, you know, and, and who likes to sing songs and throw rocks. So if you can if you can uh, throw rocks and be aggressive and, and and whistle a tune while doing it, then even better. I think that's the perfect description of Midnight Fans is music for people who like to throw rocks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do. I mean, when you're a kid, that's what you do. And you, it's still fun. You know? what, what do you do when you, when you go to a lake or a river? You fucking throw a rock in it because it's fun. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right, now let's go with well, the lyrics question. I thought that was further down, but I guess it's right here. Um, comparing the lyrics um, to some of your previous albums, I definitely think they're the nastiest, especially the sex witchery songs. So um, do you agree? And I guess what brought you into that depraved state of mind when writing these lyrics? Um, yeah, yeah, I would agree. Uh, it's just... just... 
2019 happened, you know, essentially. Um, <laughs> you know, that's that's when uh, that's when that's when the um, album was written, and um, so yeah, that yeah, to, to, they're pretty self-explanatory, <laughs> and there's really um, nothing um, that I can try and say. Well, is a is a reference towards this, and and it's a metaphor for that. Um, they're pretty much straight up, uh, and, and that was that was the point um, to to do it like that. All right, and now um, now discuss the album artwork um, because I definitely think this is um, some of the most unique album artwork I've seen from your releases. Yeah, uh, that's again, it's, it's, that's always the goal for at least uh, art. You know, I have, I have nothing to do with it. The, uh, William Lacey, who does the art, who's been doing art since Satanic Royalty. I always think he does exactly what you just said, unique. It's, it doesn't look like um, your commonplace heavy metal album covers. So, uh, you know, that's that's one thing I like about it. And, and he pretty much only does art for me. I mean, he's not like... Um, a, you know, like, oh, we, gotta, we have to seek out this artist or that artist who does all these bands... Um, albums, you know, he's pretty much exclusive uh, to Midnight Art, you know, as far as like album covers go, I mean, he does his own art and does whatever he does, but as far as music and bands and stuff, it's, you know, I'm pretty much it for him. So, uh, I, I like that, you know. Nice, that is very interesting. Yeah, because it might, he's it, like, it's, it's like the, uh, um, what's his face, at the, my, my brain's uh, heading in blank for the, for the Iron Maiden art and, you know, Derek Riggs. So, you get, you know, it's got my, like, the Derek Riggs Iron Maiden uh, combo there. Great. And now, um, you've been a one man band for almost 20 years. So, what keeps you going? <laughs> Food, water, uh, <laughs> the basics, um, <laughs> <laughs> necessities of uh, life. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, it's, 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 that's all I got. Yeah, that's it's it is it's, it's, it, it is all I have. If I if I didn't do music or listen to music, I would really just be a blob of flesh and bone, just collecting dust. So uh, that's that's the only thing that, that does keep me going is is listening to music, playing music, uh, making up music, all that kind of stuff. Um, everything else is just kind of. I don't know. It comes as it comes. Well, yeah, but, uh, yeah pretty, pretty uh, fortunate, I guess, to have uh, have been born in this country, as they say, to to have rock and roll to be very important. So I can just worry about, you know, <clears throat> some people have to worry about, you know, like I said, eating and drinking food, drinking food and eating water, all that kind of stuff. But um, you know, so that that's uh. That's, that's, that's the most important thing to me, is music. Well, hey, you are a blob of flesh and bone collecting dust and playing music, so there you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, now, I mean, since you, uh, well, at least on the recordings, you, you know, you play all the instruments, so do you have a favorite one that you play? Uh, you know, it's fun. It's always fun to play drums, you know, just because, again, going back to the throwing rocks thing. <laughs> You, know, you just have sticks in your hands, pounding on things. So that's that's always going to be the funnest. But um, the one that's the most, uh, I guess, natural for me is just is bass, and then you know that's what I play live. So it's just a uh, just a good combo platter, if you will, of uh, pounding on things and still carrying a tune somewhat. So uh, that, that's still my that's that's usually my go to. If you don't mind a suggestion for the next album, how about during the recording you throw rocks at the drum set and see what happens? <laughs> see what kind of noise it makes? That's, that's not a bad suggestion at all. <laughs> As a matter of fact, you know, it, it, hold on, let me get a pencil and paper here, write that down. Rocks throw at drum set. Got it. Okay. Yeah. See some creative you, mastery. You, 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 you full credit. <laughs> Stephanie Jensen from Infernal TV on the writing, <laughs> the writing of the album. <laughs> All right, so um, 
Now, I guess going back, because obviously you have other musicians playing with you live, um, and I guess this is a good little reminder for whoever is listening that you will be going on tour with Mayhem and Watain, right? I think the Ace tour starts next month? Yeah, yeah, early next month. That's the, uh, that's the plan. If, uh, you know, if the world allows it still, but as far as I know, everything's on track and ready to go. Perfect. Um, uh, but, um, I guess going into the live performance, um, do you, um, I guess, does, do you think your music changes, like the sound, the dynamic when others are playing your music along with you versus just you in the studio throwing rocks at drums? Yeah, it, 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 it's, it's, I mean, it's going to have to, um, you know, not, not completely dramatically differently much, but, um, for the, for the most part, it's, 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 it's different, but the same, you know, they're, like, uh, you know, Vanek, he's not going in there and totally reworking the solos or something like that, or, you know, it's, it's, you know, he's playing what he, what he feels he wants to play, but he's, he's still playing the song and keeping it, uh, to, to what, what my original, um, you know, kind of, uh, thought of it was, you know, like the, the, the common thing, I guess I always say is, it is just, you know, Bruce Kulick from Kiss butchering up Ace Freely solos, you know, just because Ace's solos were so nice and simple, and then Bruce Kulick comes in and just wanks all around him and kind of ruined him, in my opinion. But, so, like, yeah, he doesn't do that kind of stuff, you know, where he just goes in there and, quote, unquote, improves solos or something like that. So, uh, but, uh, yeah, I think they, they, do, they do a great job of, of interpreting my disastrous performances and making them better. Now, I do want to quote you. I read this in the press release. Um, I realize I'm musically handicapped, but there's a charm to it. And I think I know that charm is uh, your music is very raw. And I think that's something that we don't really get in modern metal and rock anymore. And I think that's why um, you've had a devoted fan base for all of these years. So what are your thoughts on that? Well, yeah, that's exactly it. That's the that's the type of music I like. You know, I, I want to hear I want to hear real. I mean, just like anybody else, right? I mean, you, you want if you if you watch a movie or you want you want to see the real emotion, you want to hear the real emotion. You don't want to hear it fixed in the studio. You don't want to hear it. Um, uh, you, know, you, know, you know, I say that word fixed. You know, not you know, kind of sarcastically. Um, because you know who wants that? I mean, you, the rock and roll, right there again. You know, this is like this rock thing keeps coming back in this conversation. But um, that's what it's about. It's about it's about being rough. It's about being raw. So um, yeah, it's it's there's nothing there's nothing wrong with uh, being being uh, yeah musically handicapped. I'm all, I'm all for it. <laughs> All right, so this is the very last question, and you can say whatever you want. Um, you can convince people to remember to drink food and eat water, and um, um, and you know, thank your fans for listening to your disastrous musically handicapped music, and watch your your performance next month or whatever. So, um, assuming the world allows it, so take it away. There you go. Yeah, I think you did, you did a fantastic job. There, I, I sound like a true Clevelander with all these uh, negative responses and, and self-deprecating uh, uh, responses for you, but uh, it's the truth. Yeah, we're all just we're all just human blobs of flesh, like the dust. So uh, don't think too highly of yourselves. <laughs> all right. So thank you to all these human blobs of flesh who also have ears and are able to. You know, they have the sensory auditory perception in order to listen to this interview and <laughs> and be able to process it in your brain. <laughs> that's, the, that's the part where it hurts. Like when you start trying to use your brain, it just hurts really bad. Ouch! Ouch! Well, <laughs> well, listeners, we hope you didn't use your brain too much during this interview. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah. Check your brain 
stand at the door when you come to the game. <laughs> but yes, um, in all seriousness, uh, yes, uh, Midnight slash Athenar um, will be releasing Let Them Be Witchery on March 4th. And around that time, you should also expect to see him and his, his cronies, his, his league of band members, um, uh, villains, um, touring around with, with Mayhem and Watain. So that should be the beginning of March. So, yep. Uh, thank you again for listening to this interview and stay metal, everyone. <laughs>